Okay, this is going to be a build video for the uh, Beetlebot, and um, I'm not calling it a spider or a roving spider because it only has six legs, which you know kind of brings you into a different insect land. So in this particular case, there's a bottom frame piece which prints all as one piece, and I do turn supports on just for these outside edges that are higher but other than that it just prints very cleanly as one piece the next part you're going to need is going to be the screw whether you want to call it a worm drive or a screw drive is up to you and then this end is going to be a three millimeter hole that prints even with a flat side and the reason for that is I'm going to be using an M20 N20 type motor. You can find these on Amazon. You can find them with like up to 10 different uh, gear ratios. This particular one I'm holding in my hand is a 12 volt rated uh, 1000 RPM at 12 volt. And the reason we need such high RPMs is because this worm drive drives the gears which we're going to make the robot walk. This already provides quite a bit of gear reduction. But now, getting back to what I was saying earlier, you can see the shaft on this has got a flattened side if it shows up right there. And like I say, it, this does print with a three millimeter with a flat side in it, but depending on your filament and your settings and everything else, it may fit too tight. Um, I printed a lot of these getting the scale of this whole project and everything right, and I'd say all of them I was able to wedge the thing in as is with the exception of this one. So in this one I took one out and got a drill bit about the same size as the motor and went ahead and, and drilled it out round and yes then I could of course push the motor into the end of it no problem but it would spin in there. And I didn't particularly want to glue the motor in there so if you ran into that same situation what I ended up doing is on your 3D printer and your printing you always have that purge line or you even have that line that goes around the parts I just took a piece of that sucked some glue on that piece jammed it in the hole and then pushed the motor in on top of that so basically it glued that little piece of purge line junk plastic you want me throw it away and it's turned it into a key to lock the two together so you're gonna take Trying to look to see where my uh, drive's at. It's going to be on that side. So you're going to take this piece. You can see it has one end that's solid, the smaller and the other end, and basically drop it in there like so. So it just this end sits in this bearing half. This end sits in what's going to hold the motor because the motor will fit vertically into there. And you just push it in and once you start getting close then you can spin the gear till you you find your slot and just keep pushing that motor on in there like so so if I applied power now that worm gear would spin now the next thing we're going to do and because the black is so hard to photograph and show details I did print up some parts in gray and gold and one black part just to try to make this next step a little bit easier for everyone to understand um, some parts of interest well I want to get ahead of myself I'm not sure of the best order to assemble all of this in but let's just uh, start there's gonna be a lower leg and an upper leg part so depending how you want to look at this whole thing, why don't I just show you a complete assembly first and then show you how we get there. So I have the complete leg assemblies. You're going to be making six of these. As you can see, this would be the toe. Here's a lower leg assembly. Here's an upper leg assembly. And here's a, a shoulder piece, if you will. And here's a, a control arm part that fits from here to here. And then it goes to this funky little piece here and to the gear. So we have to make six of these assemblies. 
like I say, so I just printed some of these parts up in the gray because I think it'll photograph better or show up on camera better. Um, we have these pins, these tubes. This is the long one. You should have two of these for each leg, which I do. And then there's a mid-sized one, which is going to connect the two leg parts together. And then a really short one, which is going to hold the toe on. And then there are a couple of spacers. There's a large spacer. And there's two smaller spacers the same size. I'm showing you just one of them. There's this strange clip piece, which we'll call a gear washer which is going to clip that mechanical arm that I showed you and also clip it onto the gear. It's a very unique design. It's very clever. Um, then there's going to be a boatload of these little C-clips that you're going to print. Each one of these takes about one minute and for the whole project you're going to be printing like 72 of these. So a little over an hour. You, if you fill your bed with these you can print up a whole bushel of them real quick. So I don't know if there's a right or a wrong way to doing this but what I like to do is take a clip and take these two pieces I showed you and just stick a clip on the end on one end, doesn't matter which end, of all of those tubes is a prep step like so. These clips are in gold so it would help stand off so you could see the color difference a little better little piece of plastic burr on that one. So I'll just prep them all with a clip like so. Then I think for no particular reason let's start with uh, a toe. On these uh, upper leg parts you can see one side kinda has detail and one side's flat. Obviously the flat side was on the printer and because it doesn't have detail why don't we put that to the inside where it can't be seen. So on all of the leg parts the flat part of basically will be facing towards the ground or this hump part will be facing up if you will and the fatter part always works its way back towards the body so this little narrow part with this funny cutout that's where the toe is going to go in this particular case. So I'll take the shortest of those little pin pieces I had I'm going to stick it in here just like that just sitting in that end and then we'll take the toe which I believe is sitting here here it is here's the toe part and you can see it's got a part that sticks out it prints flat no supports and that part that's sticking out is going to fit into that ridged part so I'm gonna slide it in like that and it sticks in there and that's what locks the toe in place and at this point your part should look like this the angle like that and that going up like that you grab the other one that we had it's they're mirrored so the humps will stay the same you put it on and then you just take another one of those little C clips locking clips whatever you'd like to call them and pop it on there so now we have a toe connected like so. Next I think what we'll do is we'll put the uh, control lever, this lever arm piece, and you'll notice how it has a has a slight bend here and a crook down there. As best as I could tell, I want to make sure I say this right, I'm gonna look at one of these that's put together. Yeah. As best as I can tell, that sag part is going to aim down. So let's keep an eye on that as I progress here. I'm going to grab the next cylinder length, the mid-sized one. Here's that leg part we just made. Because that locks only on one leg, that means the other side can be moved out of the way. So I'm going to lift the back side out of the way. This is going to go in this middle hole here. And then you take one of the small washers, the spacers, put the spacer on. Then we're going to take this control arm that we just talked about and see where the bow is dipping down. We'll have that dip 
down. Take another small spacer, put that on there, and bring that side of that leg down. This is all supposed to bend, it's at an angle. And then we'll clip it. And once it's clipped, I'll give you a little bit better view of the assembly so far. So we have the toe, we have it locked into this part, clip, small spacer, control arm, small spacer, clip. And that part angles down and humps like that. So there's where we're at right now. So next let's connect that to the next part of the leg. And again there's a, a right and a left and these have fill parts on them. Again, this part's normally going to aim down. The fatter short end is going to go closer towards the body so the pornier end is going to be our knee joint basically. There's a cutout area on both of the parts because they mirror each other. That's where that control arm is going to go through. So let's grab one of the longer pins that we'd already prepped. Stick it down on the small end like that. We have this bigger spacer. And it's going to go into this part that we'd made before. I'm going to take this arm, the new leg arm part, which would be the lower, like so. The back side, like so. We're going to put a clip on that. There. So now we have something that looks like that and this control arm can fit through that notch that I talked about like so. Now we're down to the shoulder part. And this particular part being in black might be a little harder to do but you can see it's got a group. This part actually prints vertically like that. If you need to on your printer you could uh, add a skirt to that to support it. Because if you print it vertically, you don't have to have any support material, which is good. The control arm is going to pass through the slot in it, right there. And then you're going to capture on the lower hole with that remaining long pin that you had. It's going to go through there, through there. And then you'd put the remaining clip on this side. I guess I'll go ahead and clip it. I'm going to have to take this part apart because I need to use that shoulder piece when I actually assemble this thing. Like so. So that's what you have so far. Now the remaining part of this brings us down to this tricky clip. And as you can see on this clip, there's this flat area right there. And that's where that control arm is going to go go into and nest. And the way you do that is since this is PLA you simply twist the part like so. Go ahead and pull that out like that. See I'm pulling it apart. I'm going to put hopefully this will show up on camera. I'm trying to do it from behind and keep it on camera. Good luck right? All right. Got it in there like that. See how that goes in there? And then it pops back together. So now that control arm is, is captured. Well, when you come down to your gear part, you can see the gear prints flat and it's got a place for that hole to pop in there. But of course, to get that part on the hole, you have to Man, this is hard trying to keep it on camera and still <laughs> still do it. It's actually easy in person. I just kind of pull the thing out like that and then take the gear. Let's see, maybe if I come around to this side of the camera like that. See how that fit around? And then if you pop this back down and up, boom. 
it's locked on there. So now this gear can turn that gives you the joint that you need so everything can can give and move and work. Pretty cool, huh? I think so. So that's basically where we're at there. So now um, I do need to take this because my all my other parts for this project were in black. I need this shoulder part back so that we can continue with the build. So I'm going to disassemble the just that part of this leg thing that we just made. Like so. Ooh. Just give me a second here and you guys will be able to see what, what I'm doing again. That. That. Good. And there. I'll reassemble that onto the black leg that I'm going to be using. Like so. back around okay so here's one of the legs we'll actually be using it just would have been harder to see than the gray it was the only reason I went ahead and built the gray parts up because I thought it might show up on camera easier so basically what we're gonna do now is we're going to put the legs onto this base piece and in order to hold them on there we do need a bunch of those little clips try to dig those out I can find six of them. I got a whole bag of parts here. And everything's black. So I get a fistful of those. All right. So when we've put these on, we need to get them registered the right way so the thing will walk in the end. And you can kind of turn it one tooth at a time. I'm trying to line that up straight out to here so I can get something in line so that we have a registration point for putting the rest of the legs on. Basically everything alternates. Um, if I grab another leg, this one, since that one's out, that means this one would need to be all the way in. And it might be easier if the leg is hanging off the other side. So just look at the pin part. Okay. Try fitting it a few times. I wanted to get the pin in as straight as a line and the opposite of the one that we just did. When I'm snapping on is those little C-clips to hold the gears in place. If it's all kind of floppy and wombly and in your way, you can go ahead and, and take the shoulder part, which is going to poke into that hole there. Poke it in its hole and grab a C-clip and snap, snap the clip on like so. That'll kind of hold that leg out of the way. Might make it easier as you're putting all these together, pop it down through its hole, take a C-clip, snap it together. So we got two on, Let's grab some more legs. So we had one uh, centered all the way out, centered all the way in, that means this one should be centered all the way out. And I think that looks pretty good. Good thing about using these C-clips to assemble it is if it doesn't walk right, you can always come back and get right back in there and fix it. Like if you got off a tooth or something. Okay, we got that one there. C-clip on. 
Now we're coming around to this side. Grab some more legs. So on this side, you just um, you kind of keep them turned the same way. For example, since that uh, point is out there, we'll have this point facing in. And again, try to center it up so it uh, seems like it's And that's uh, not how I would normally be holding the part if I wasn't trying to stay in frame with a camera. <laughs> Doesn't make it easy. But as you can see, it's not a difficult build if you have something for reference. So we had that one facing out. So now this one's facing in. We do the same thing here since that one's facing in. We'll have this one facing out. And you just keep lifting it and moving it until you think you've really got it as square and straight as you can get it. Got the clip on. Putting the shoulder in. Clip on. Only one leg to go. I think maybe one more tooth. No, I'm not really sure. Sometimes nothing seems perfect, so you just kind of, you kind of just go with something and see how it works in the end. That. I'm digging in the bag for more C-clips is why I keep reaching away. There, look at that. Holy shamoly. So at this point, you actually could power it up to test what you've done, but it's going to be better if you anchor the tops of these shoulders first and uh, get rid of some of the possibilities of slop. So there's a next part this mid-body part here and you can see there are three places where it can sit just like like that and then get three more clips and clip that on that. Black on black. I don't know why I printed it in black. I wasn't thinking about uh, camera, obviously. There. So I've got some clips, so now that part's held on. This whole area in here will be available if you're going to put some small LiPo batteries or something in there. You can certainly stick them in there. I don't have any, so I'm going to be controlling mine from a battery pack made up of AA batteries at the end of a wire. Which kind of brings us to, so again, at this point it's pretty, getting fairly stable. Um, I do have a cosmetic shroud that I made and it could go on now or it could go on later I think we'll put it on later 
So this is the upper part of the body. Like I said, I'm running mine from a remote uh, battery pack. I've provided a place on the body if you want to put in a slide switch. So if you have an internal uh, battery pack to the whole thing, then you can turn it on and off here. This particular case, I wanted to go more than on and off. I got a slide switch with a center off position. It's a double pull, double throw, so that I can do forward, off, reverse, off, like that. And I've already pre-wired that up, more or less. Haven't really tried fitting it on here yet, though. So let's try that now. Let's see if I can uh, see if I can do that. I don't know if all the wires will uh, force down in there or not. We're going to find out. Wires do seem to be fighting me. But that's what wires do best, right? I think it'll go. What I'm going to do is put a clip up here in the front. You see the shoulders have to clip all in too, so it'll tend to hang things up until you get all of that popped in. Try to get the shoulders popped down like so. And I might as well just put some clips on. So I'm not fighting that the whole time. Maybe now I can uh, see if the wires will much mush down into place. More clips. Clip this uh, body top in the back, hold it down. Get these legs popped in. Hopefully, that's one, two, three. Now let's put clips on those. Ooh, look at that. I believe I have everything clipped up. I believe I basically have it assembled. Uh, like I said, that whole middle area in here could be a place for housing batteries, or this little part that I made here can snap on after the fact. I just spread it out, push the front all the way up. You can see the uh, curved back parts they can snap around these posts they do take a little bit of effort but the clips kind of can get in the way too when you're trying to snap those on but they'll go I'm gonna turn this clip to try to get well it doesn't want to turn and I'm not gonna let it say no to me I'm gonna say clip you got to turn I think I moved it a little bit I'm trying to snap this last little piece around there we go so that's snapped on so now you've got like this uh, nice body covering over the whole thing oh so I think the only thing I really need to do now is to solder these two wires onto the motor and of course I didn't pre-think about that, so the soldering gun is not warmed up, but it doesn't take too long. It's pretty quick. If I can find a place to put it where I don't melt anything. And while it's warming up, I'll grab the battery pack. Like I said, I didn't have any little uh, lipos and I didn't feel like ordering them. 
for this build so I just piled up some uh, pan lights and I do mean piled up it doesn't need a lot of current you just need to meet the voltage of the motor that you bought because they sell these little N20s and 6 volt well 3 volt 6 volt 12 volt I'm not a hundred percent sure it's not the same motor in all of them and they simply tell you different RPM ratings based on the voltage I don't know I could be wrong about that but uh, I think we're almost warmed up right now I got a dog that wants outside so just give me a minute Okay, let's see if we can solder those wires on. Since I have a forward and reverse switch, there isn't really any right or wrong. And I'll just kind of tack them on for the moment. Turn the pencil down so I don't start a fire. And I think we're not going to be able to do this up here. We're going to have to move this down onto the floor. So let's uh, let's try doing that. I just knocked the whole battery pack apart since it's just a case of a uh, alligator clips trying to hold it all together Put that in on there and on there okay I successfully knocked the alligator clips off the battery Let's see what happens. So, that's with the 1000 RPM N20 motor. So if you want to walk faster, you're probably going to need uh, something over 1000 RPM. If you want to walk slower, go with a smaller one. I've noticed they had the like 680 RPM, uh, 360 RPM, of course you get down to 100 RPM, depending on how slow you wanted to go or, or how fast you wanted to go. Again, black just wasn't the best choice for trying to show details I guess. But there's your build, and I'll uh, get the files up to Thingiverse. Like I say, it's actually a, a simple build. It's just knowing which way to place parts when you clip them. But the nice thing is with that clip system, if you do it wrong, you just unclip it and you change it back. There's nothing permanent. It's not like you glued anything and you're, you're stuck to being in, in one type of design or another. And it's nice if you do have a switch on it, even if it's just an on-off switch. Like I say, in this case though, I wired it so I could go forward or, or backward using a double pull switch. And see here, you get kind of a close-up of the linkage of one of the legs, and you see how the gears spin around. And that main worm gear, or screw gear, depending on how you want to call it. Your N20 just pushes right into the housing, directly drives it. Okay, I figure the video is probably long enough. I'll call that good.